Hello! In this DCS tutorial we'll go over air-to-ground combat in the P-51 Mustang. Like most World War II fighters, this plane is able to be equipped with unguided bombs and rockets. Unlike modern jets, these weapons require more pilot skill than knowledge of the systems. In this tutorial we'll not only go over the systems, but also how to improve your skill in using the weapons. P-51D's main armament are its 650 caliber machine guns, three mounted on each wing. Don't let their being 50 caliber machine guns fool you, however. These machine guns tore through infantry, trucks, trains, and even light armored to medium armored vehicles in World War II. These machine guns are connected to the K-14 gun sight. A gun sight which gives a basic gun sight mode and a dog fighting mode which allows it to calculate for movement in dog fighting. We'll only be using the basic mode today. So to arm your guns, actually to arm your gun sight, you can flick this switch on the weapons control panel down just to turn on the gun sight and you can flick it upwards to be able to turn on your guns as well. It's basically your gun safety switch. Now, right now it's in the advanced dogfighting mode. Uh, here's how you adjust your brightness on the gun sight panel. This is turning off the gun sight uh, calculations. This switches between modes. This mode uses both the dogfighting and the normal and we're just going to be sticking with the normal for today, the normal gun sight. This is the best one for air to ground combat with your machine guns. Now, you want to be ready for recoil, because these guns do recoil a good bit, and you want to be ready for that, be ready to control your plane. So just keep that in mind whenever you're practicing. Alright, now the majority of air-to-ground fighting in the P-51, because of the lack of fancy sensors, is just seeing your targets. So it's good to have an ability to zoom in and out, mapped, to some easy keys to use. Now when you're lining up for your shots you want to be able to let the aircraft's natural tendency to go down or up or whatever it is slowly move you into position and only use slight adjustments on the stick to line yourself up. This allows you to line yourself up better and have more time to keep your guns firing on the target. You're gonna pull up and now let's take a closer look about how we line up our sights on target. In this example, the target is here, and we need to move our gun sight down in order to line up the shot. However, if we push the stick forward to go down, we could jolt the aircraft down quickly, and if we were too close to the target, this might not give us enough time to be able to respond and shoot the target. Here I managed to get it. However, if we have slower, more fluid, and more preemptive motions, it will make it easier to aim. In this example, the target is once again below me. However, this time I'm going to go to the left, then bank to the right to decrease my lift, so that I'll slowly drift down and my gun sight will more slowly move over the target.
This method will make it easier for beginners to practice and is also very good for attacking convoys from the side. Now let's go over some quick tips on how to try to avoid incoming fire. This time I'm going to attack an armored vehicle that has heavy machine guns on it. See if I can find it. There it is shooting at me. Alright, and now I'm going to circle around and attack it. And when you see the flash of its muzzle, its muzzle flash, you want to change your direction because the enemy is going to be trying to lead its shots to hit you. And if you change your direction, you'll throw it off. You don't want to change your direction too much though so that you can't attack the enemy. Now one thing that you need to remember when it comes to guns or rockets or bombs is always make sure you pull up early enough. It's very easy not do that. Now I see the muzzle flash. I want to keep dodging, changing my position and score some hits. So you see what I did there was simply change my direction a little bit every time I saw the muzzle flash. Now let's go over how to use rockets in the P-51. The P-51 is able to carry up to 10 HVAR rockets. These unguided rockets are pretty hard to aim. and You actually have to fly down at a pretty steep angle in order to control them regularly and be able to learn them at all. First, let's get started with the actual control panel for the rockets. In order to select your rockets mode, you want to be able to take this silver switch right here and flip it up. You want to be able to use this switch to switch between single fire and auto mode. Use this switch to choose which of your rockets specifically to fire in single fire mode. And use this switch to switch between an instant explosion and a slight delay. We're going to stick with the instant explosion and we're also going to select rocket number 10. Now, whenever you're coming down at a slight angle, you want to kind of put your crosshairs just above the enemies. These rockets have quite a bit of a drop, so you want to kind of put them right underneath the crosshairs, right about here on your gun sight. Unless you're at a really steep angle, which is what I'm going to show. At really steep angles, uh, almost it's almost like dive bombing. You can um, you can put your crosshairs right on the enemy. Now it's recommended that you come down at very steep angles, but I'm going to show you that steeper angles are for more of the single fire mode. Whereas when using an automatic fire, it's better to come at not as much of a steep angle and use that for convoys. Alright, as you can see, while I didn't hit anything, I went right on the road as I was aiming for it. And it was only because of that steep angle I was flying at that I actually was able to do that. Now you need to remember to pull up. Watch here as I get a little carried away trying to shoot enemies and nearly hit the ground. This is why you always need to pay more attention to when you're pulling up than to actually aiming so you survive to come back again. Now let's get to automatic rockets. Once you've got your switch set to auto, you want to kind of line yourself up with a convoy. Automatic rockets are really best for clustered groups of enemies. What you want to do is fly down as not as steep of an angle, and when you attack, what will happen is your rockets will kind of spread out over the enemy convoy as I will show you here. Now, as you can see, it wastes rockets, but it has a shotgun effect, which almost guarantees a kill whenever you're attacking a convoy. Now let's go over the bombs for the P-51 Mustang. The P-51 is capable of carrying two 500-pound unguided bombs. Like rockets, they can be quite a challenge to use, 
and you have to use them at a, an angle, quite a good dive to be able to use them. You use this switch as you use to select the rockets to select your bombs and can choose a train mode which will allow you to drop one after the other or drop both at the same time. Now these are best used diving from well 3,000 feet and above to about 5,000 feet. Above 5,000 feet it starts getting very dangerous because the amount of G's you'll pull on your aircraft well they can get very dangerous for you. Um, so it's best to find that sweet spot between 3,000 feet and 5,000 feet in my experience. That way you'll have enough room to be able to dive bomb and also not tear your plane apart from g-forces. Now technically the P-51 doesn't really dive bomb. I prefer to come at around between a 45 degree angle and a 90 degree angle but not quite a 90 degree angle to the ground. While you want to avoid high G's with these heavy bombs on your wings, it's also really a good idea to pick up some speed so your bombs will travel as straight as possible since you're not going to be doing absolute dive bombing. As you can see here, what you do is get toward your angle, a little bit more than 45 degrees, put your gun sight above the convoy and wait till you feel as though your bombs are going to head straight. It's really a feeling you'll get from practice. And as you can see, I've damaged the convoy as a result of my bombing run. Now that's really it as far as the P-51's air-to-ground weaponry goes, except for the fact that you can carry bombs and rockets at the expense of, obviously, a lot more weight. This really doesn't operate much differently than rockets by themselves or bombs by themselves. Uh, you can just use that switch that you use to select your rockets or bombs to switch between the two. Now if you come into a dogfight and you need to release your bombs you can use these two levers with the red handles to release your bombs quickly without having to set it up using the other switch. Well. It seems as though that's all for air-to-ground combat for the P-51 Mustang. The next DCS tutorial will be on air-to-air -air combat for the P-51 Mustang.